we are as a uh, uh, assistant officer, before working as an assistant officer, I was working for a CRO company. Uh, majorly, I was working on uh, the vaccines, especially the Sanofi uh, influenza vaccine. I was just involved in that, you know, like doing the data management and uh, writing the protocols, reviewing the data, writing the uh, manuscript, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, like filing for the FDA, you know, like documentation, you know, like everything, all in all, you know, like it was, it was involved in that. And later I joined in the last minute. So, so, sir, can I, can I start with the uh, presentation, sir? Yes, sir, you can start presenting your thing and kindly be a little bit louder more, sir. Okay, awesome, fine. <laughs> I request all the participants to mute your mics. Yes, uh, can you able to uh, see my screen? Hello? Uh, no, sir. You are able to see? Yeah, now yes. we can be able to see, okay. sir. So thank you very much. Uh, the topic for the today's presentation is uh, about the genetic variations in COVID-19. And yes, I am going to take another uh, uh, 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes to one hour of your time to discuss about uh, the genetic variation. It's, it's, it's a very huge topic. I can say it's a kind of a, whatever I'm going to tell today, you know, or I discuss. It's going to be a very brief uh, discussion only, I can say, because uh, it's like a, a drop of water in the ocean. Because currently, this COVID 19, you know, like it's the top of the town. Uh, it's, it's nothing but a respiratory illness caused by a coronavirus called the SARS coronavirus 2. And yes, this infection started in Wuhan seafood market. That is the epicenter for this uh, infection. And yes, you know, like uh, it is spread across the world as it leads to a huge number of uh, infected cases in different countries. And yes, WHO has made a public health emergency on January and later it was converted into pandemic city on uh, March 11, 2020. So at the beginning of the outbreak, it, they, they were thinking that okay, fine, it could be a zoonotic infection, so they they wanted there's less chances of human to human transmission. But later they found that yes, uh, uh, this uh, there are uh, more chances of human to human trans transmission. We are uh, this droplet nuclei, and uh, is from both symptomatic and asymptomatic patients during the incubation period. So at the time of this, uh, at the time of preparing this uh, presentation. Uh, I can say, you know, like there were 54 lakh 36,952 cases were reported uh, across the globe, of which 1 lakh 33,725 cases were reported in India, and 3 lakh 44,550 deaths were reported across the globe, of which 3,009 deaths were reported in India. So, this SARS coronavirus is rapidly moving, you know, like with uh, uh, different countries. And yes, you know, like uh, what scientists and people have identified is, you know, like the mutations, you know, like uh, uh, could be the reason where, you know, like uh, different uh, strains and also, you know, like uh, there is uh, uh, difference in the, you know, like clinical characteristics. So that, that would be the reason I can say. So before going to the strain, uh, uh, diversity, I mean diversity. Uh, so just brush up our, uh, you know, like the, the knowledge about the SARS coronavirus. I'm not going to take much of time. So I just rush up few slides, you know, like uh, maybe for the past one week you would have uh, witnessed this uh, information with other uh, fellow scientists. So SARS coronavirus structure, if you're going to see, you know, like they've got uh, two major uh, proteins uh, of which uh, uh, glycoprotein S. That is spike plasma protein is considered to be the major uh, uh, protein. And yes, it has got two subunits which are very important for uh, the host cell receptor and also the fusion protein. And there's one more protein called a membrane protein. This membrane protein, which is acting as a viroporin, and uh, uh, which is very important for uh, you know like transporting various ions, for example, calcium ions, and also it is it also maintains the structural integrity of the virus. And then the next protein is a nucleoprotein. Yes, this nucleoprotein, which encaps, which which just takes, it just covers the genetic material of the virus, that is the RNA, by using this nucleocapsid protein, I can see. And then the other protein is envelope protein. This envelope protein is also, to some extent, you know, like it gives protection to the virus. 
and also even this is all uh, uh, this protein is also acting as a viral program where uh, uh, you know like a lot of exchanges are happening between inside and outside cell coming to the classification of virus so coronavirus uh, yes it belongs to the subfamily coronavirus in the family coronaviridae and order nidoviridae and uh, this coronavirus uh, were in a family you know like subfamily has got four genus important importantly alpha coronavirus beta coronavirus gamma coronavirus and delta coronavirus of which alpha and beta coronavirus has got uh, the uh, sub i mean species uh, uh, which can cause a serious infection in uh, human beings whereas the gamma coronavirus and delta coronavirus coronavirus you know like uh, as the virus which has got uh, you know animal you know like uh, uh, etiology i can say i mean bird bird it is sorry and coming to the classification of beta coronavirus i can say uh, it is got around uh, five different clades i can say or uh, categories and uh, in this five different categories uh, i can say this uh, sarbi sarbico virus and velvico virus are found to be the deadliest one where the, under the sarbico virus we have uh, sars coronavirus the outbreak which has happened in the year 2003 now the covid 19 virus which comes under this group and also there are certain bad viruses are also you know like which we used to term that as a sars related viruses which also kept under this sarbico virus and this mervico virus as you are well aware that there is four to five years back there was an outbreak in uh, gulf countries that is mainly respiratory syndrome related coronavirus yes this is kept under this uh, mervico virus the beta coronavirus again you know like it is further classified into different lineages i can say that uh, four lineages are there a b c d in this uh, the sars corona virus which comes uh, you know like which is perfectly placed in the uh, lineage p and uh, this diagram uh, which shows uh, you know this is the unrooted phylogenetic tree which shows you know like uh, different types of uh, corona virus and yes you know like where it is kept you know like different clades and uh, for example beta corona virus has got a b c d i guess you can able to see this sars corona virus is kept under the beta corona virus uh, uh, b lineage and you can able to see there are some black triangles uh, you know like uh, which are nothing but a bad corona virus why i'm saying is the covid 19 virus you know like uh, it is almost uh, you know like showing a structural or i mean genomic similarity with the bad corona virus almost you know like 96% uh, the similarity shows with the bad corona virus and also it also shows uh, uh, you know like 98% similarity with pangolin virus i mean pangolin corona virus so for that reason i thought okay friend maybe i can just show you this picture and yes this slide shows the common uh, corona viruses which infects the human beings initially it was six virus like uh, 229e hku mine nl 63 oc 43 mass corona virus and sars corona virus in this list you know like the seventh uh, uh, one which is which is joined us uh, sars corona virus too which is the reason for the covid 19 infection in human beings coming to the genomic organization uh, yes this corona virus has got a large the one of the among the rna virus family and that two virus uh, you know and uh, which is what uh, 30% of uh, gc content when you are going to see this uh, organ i mean genomic organization in uh, it starts with virus the uh, region followed by ors on a one b and then spike protein envelope protein m protein and n protein and yes there are uh, around 12 functional ors and uh, nine subgenomic uh, subgenomic mrnas which carries uh, the concerned leader sequences And also nine transcription regulator sequences and two UTRE. If you are going to see this uh, genomic organization, two third of the region is occupied with this one particular war of this uh, war of one AB. You can see war of one AB. In this, you know, like uh, uh, two important polyproteins are the peptide-like uh, protease and PCL uh, protein. This protease is again further, you know, like we will put 12. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, 16 non-structural proteins, which are uh, very important for uh, the the normal function of virus. I can say. And apart from this, you know, like we have a structural protein uh, like uh, S protein, M protein, 
uh, gene, I mean, gene for S protein, uh, envelope protein, membrane protein, and nuclear, nu I mean, nuclear capsid protein. And with the replication, as you all know, that uh, the infection is uh, the immune infection, which we are uh, getting us to drop like nuclei. So, when the virus enters the uh, you know, like uh, enters our uh, body, where, like, what it does is, you know, like it, it just goes and finds the receptor. AC2 receptor is uh, perfectly, you know, like uh, bond with this virus. And yes, the dead of the spike protein, which just go inside the cell and the RNA is uh, deposited or, you know, like uh, released in the cytoplasm, but it undergoes various changes. So initially, this RNA is translated to produce uh, two protein, uh, two protein that will lead, uh, I mean, two protein genes that will lead to a production of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, RDRP, there is nothing but the RNA dependent polymerase protein. This RNA dependent polymerase, which in turn uh, very helpful for converting this positive sense to negative sense for uh, uh, creating a template because uh, these templates are very useful for uh, uh, you know, like production. I mean, uh, going for translate, for going for the translation of uh, subgenomic mRNAs. So those subgenomic mRNAs are very important for. Uh, you know, translation of structural and non-structural proteins. So, the uh, translation of this uh, protein, I mean, I can give you one example about the structural proteins, so the, uh, which is well studied in the SARS coronavirus. So, the translation of the subgenomic uh, materials, example, I mean, uh, the RNAs, may lead to, uh, you know, like M-protein synthesis. This M-protein, when after synthesis, what happens is it goes to the uh, endoplasmic reticulum along with the M protein, and from there, you know, like it, it that's via the Golgi apparatus, and from the Golgi apparatus, you know, like the virus is uh, pushed out, you know, like, uh, uh, like uh, you know, it's a kind of bugging, like, uh, with the help of exocytosis process. And with the pathogenesis, as I said, the transmission is via the HOTS, uh, I mean, and droplets, uh, or a droplet nuclei, I can say. So it founds uh, the receptor, host receptor, host receptor in the nasal epithelium. So what it does is it clears the cilia. So cilia basically, you know, like it, it is like a protection to our uh, body where, uh, where, you know, like from the different microorganisms, the dust, you know, I can see, you know, like it, it just moves here and there, you know, like it just pushes out the, uh, you know, like the foreign substance. That's why, you know, like we are getting sneezing, right? So what it this, what this virus is doing is you know like when it it is getting you know like multiplied or replicated when it comes out it just clears those uh, uh, cilia so that you know like it establishes it just you know like uh, uh, helps in establishing the infection in the human beings from there you know like upper respiratory tract infection from there you know like it goes to the lower respiratory tract where it causes serious, serious uh, pneumonia I can say coming to the clinical presentation. Uh, Yes, it starts with the usually, you know, like asymptomatic infection. Usually, you know, like uh, the patient will not show any clinical uh, symptoms. So this asymptomatic infection will be there for some time. I guess it will lead to a mild infection, starting uh, with the rhinorrhea, that is upper respiratory tract infection. And later, you know, like it may lead to a uh, lower respiratory tract infection, that is pneumonia or bronchitis. And uh, yes, 80% of the cases stops here. What happened to the 20% of the cases? Yes, the 20% of the cases may have a serious or critical infection where the person, the person is unable to breathe. That is, ischemia and hypoxemia is commonly seen with the deteriorating patients. And finally, in the critical infection, you know, like uh, the patient, uh, you know, like may lead to a septic shock where, you know, like the multi organ failure is happening and yet that leads to a death. So that is the reason for the increased mortality, uh, you know, like around this uh, COVID 19 infection. Coming to the laboratory diagnosis, so we now we know like there's many people who have uh, you know like uh, briefly discussed about this. So real-time PCR has found to be the common method for identifying or detecting this virus in the clinical samples. And also we have IgG and IgM rapid test kit for antibody detection for uh, serial conversion. So why this IgM and IgG antibodies are not both, or I cannot say it's not very useful in detecting the initial infection is. So during the time of incubation and during the time of uh, symptoms, when the patient is having a symptom, that time the serial conversions may not be uh, happening because uh, uh, this virus has got a uh, you know like major impact on the B cells of our immune system. So that's why you know like uh, we are not uh, able to identify these antibodies against this uh, uh, COVID-19. And yes, we have electron microscope for identifying the structure. 
So based on this, it is the electron microscope where we can able to see the coronavirus. So corona means prone shape, prone shape virus where you can see the spike proteins, you know, like surrounded with this uh, uh, virus. So that's why it, it looks, you know, like uh, prone, prone, you know, like that's why they are named that as a coronavirus. So treatment, as of now, you know, like there's no proven treatment for uh, coronavirus. Uh, I can say both for, uh, you know, like uh, uh, antivirals and also for the va vaccine. However, you know, like there are people, you know, because of the rapid spread, you know, people are trying to repurpose the uh, already uh, approved drugs by the FDA. That's, for example, chloroquine or uh, uh, remi, uh, remdesivir or favipiravir. Like uh, these are all the drugs, you know, like now, you know, like they're just giving for the uh, SARS coronavirus infected people because the, it's, it's a kind of need of an R because, you know, people are dying. So at least this, all these drugs have been already studied, you know, like in detail previously. That's why, you know, like they're just using this for uh, coronavirus infection. So this slide shows about uh, the major vaccine trials happening across the globe. So one day a week back, you know, like China, you know, like uh, uh, they got uh, very positive results in uh, non uh, vaccine development using the non-replicating viral vector, and also the Moderna vaccine uh, company, where you know, like uh, they are developing, you know, even they got a very good result with this RNA virus vaccine. And yes, there are other companies uh, working on it, but still, everyone is in the phase two trial. Okay, coming to the topic, why you want to see this genetic variation? Usually, this new mutate substitution has been proposed to be one of the most important mechanisms of viral infection in nature. This is very common among the other viruses. And it's because of this rapid spread of SARS coronavirus, so many people are questioning what would be the reason uh, how this spreads, you know, like what makes them, you know, like making uh, or what terming them as a super spreaders. And yes, the key questions could be like uh, whether uh, this has got any impact on the pathogenesis, immune innovations, or even the viral drug resistance. So they found that, so they what uh, the scientists have found that, yes, the mutation could be one of the reason for this. And yes, uh, why you want to go for this uh, analysis of this mutation? Yes, uh, if we could uh, do some good study on this, yes, we can develop a new vaccine, and also the antiviral drugs, and also develop uh, 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 Yes, I mean, a sensitive diagnostic test for uh, diagnosing uh, or identifying this SARS coronavirus 2 virus. So, what I, you know, like, usually, you know, like, uh, people will be talking about, okay, fine, they, what, what drives this genetic whatever? Because there should be some force, right, you know, like, uh, you know, like, which makes uh, them, you know, like, diversified in the population. It's a kind of, uh, you know, usually they will say quasi species generally. Uh, initially, they will, uh, the virus will be single and later, you know, like a single genotype. And later, you know, like what happens in all the time, what happens, you know, like the virus will have multiple genotypes in the society or in the community. So what made this uh, SARS coronavirus, you know, like more diversified across the globe? So what people have told us, you know, like they took a sequence of this coronavirus too, and they just compared with the available sequences of other coronaviruses in the database. And yes, they found that uh, this virus, uh, you know, like has uh, showed us, uh, I mean, genomic uh, uh, similarity with uh, Chinese Arshu bat virus, that is rhinoplast species, which shows 96 percentage of similarities, and also also shows uh, uh, genetic similarity with pangolin coronavirus, that is 91.2 similarity. And this this two viruses, you know, like uh, divergent virus, I can say, you know, like could have infected the same organism in some way. That's why, you know, like we have a different genetic trait of uh, SARS coronavirus. And uh, yes, uh, when we are going to see the genetic alignments, the major differences, uh, you know, when you are going to compare the genetic sequences, the major sequence differences were identified in uh, spike protein, especially in the receptor binding domain of uh, spike protein. And, uh, and uh, also this uh, receptor binding protein of the SARS coronavirus is also matching exactly with this pangolin coronavirus. That's why they kind of do one conclusion that yes, this virus could have originated from uh, the two uh, organisms I can see. And however, uh, you know, like there are no studies have been reported uh, so far that you know, like uh, the, the this virus, you know, like it is very similar to uh, that is hundred percent similar to the other animal viruses. So, what could be the reason uh, for you know, like going for uh, the new coronavirus? I can say the natural selection was. Uh, could be a mutation and recombination, uh, you know, that, that could uh, make, that, that makes uh, 
or that uh, may lead to a new strain. And yes, uh, these natural selections may be influenced by the different environmental conditions and also the human genetics and also the immunization of uh, you know like uh, you know of a different population because the different uh, countries have different immunization schedules. And when it comes for the mutations, you know, like both synonymous and non-synonymous mutations have been identified in the SARS coronaviruses and uh, viruses too. And this is the bad culprit, I can say, where the rhino plus species and this pangolin cat, where, you know, like these two organisms are responsible for the new trade of SARS coronavirus 2, which is very commonly seen uh, across the globe now. So this uh, slide shows uh, the structural similarity, right? Uh, I can say uh, between uh, the SARS coronavirus, the bat related coronavirus, and pangolin coronavirus related virus. So, if you are going to see this uh, rooted phylogenetic tree, uh, you can able to see the four different clubs are there, which is that a common uh, origin. So, with this uh, thing, uh, with, with this data, you know, uh, people have said that yes, this SARS coronavirus 2 has been. Uh, has got an evolution origin from bat related coronavirus and also the pangolin related coronavirus. So, you must be putting the question then why you are saying that, you know, like it is a SARS coronavirus. So, this SARS coronavirus uh, 2, it almost shares 70% of its uh, genetic, uh, you know, like sequence similarity with SARS coronavirus 1, which has happened during the year 2003. So, so, this slide uh, shows, uh, you know, like about uh, the mutations which is happening in the uh, spike protein. So, so you must be having it out why, you know, like there are uh, uh, more, uh, almost 16 non-structural proteins and four uh, important structural proteins are there. Why you want to take this uh, structural uh, S protein? I mean, uh, S protein for, you know, like analysis. So this S protein is found to be the very important protein because without this S protein virus cannot bind to the host cell and uh, uh, and yes, it cannot after binding you know like it cannot you know like deliver the RNA into the host cell. So what I thought is I just took one example so about the mutation in the protein. So in this S protein you know you can able to see you know like in the bottom of uh, the slide uh, uh, where you know, like you have uh, sequences of SARS coronavirus to bat pangolin SARS coronavirus and SARS coronavirus uh, related, uh, uh, you know, like bat related to bat. And yes, you can able to see this uh, blue color uh, box where you know, like that is the region, you know, like which is responsible for uh, binding, uh, you know, like to the host cell, that is receptor binding domain of the uh, uh, receptor binding domain of AC2. And you can able to see this, you know, like there are uh, not much differences in the, you know, like in between this, uh, in this uh, SARS coronavirus types. And yes, uh, one thing they have identified in, uh, you know, like uh, very unique among uh, the viruses, SARS coronaviruses. And the one unique thing in SARS coronavirus 2 is, you know, like they have a polybasic cleavage site, which is not seen in other uh, coronaviruses types. So that is the difference I can say, major difference I can say. Uh, which is uh, between the SARS coronavirus 2 with other coronaviruses uh, like bat pangolin and SARS coronavirus 1. So, so what I did is, you know, like I just took three case studies and uh, so that, you know, like it gives a clear information about uh, uh, what is happening uh, uh, inside the virus and, you know, like uh, how this virus is diversified. On what basis, you know, like this virus is rapid, you know, like the diversified and what makes them uh, super spreaders. So I took three case studies. So number one study is, the uh, case study is, uh, the study was done in the University of Pittsburgh. And uh, so what they did is, you know, like they took 86 complete genomic sequences from the PubMed databases and uh, they just analyzed uh, the mutations and they found that 90, 90 almost, you know, like nine, 93 mutations uh, uh, I mean, in the, the 93 mutations in the whole genome sequence of uh, the 86 complete genome sequence of coronavirus 2, of which uh, 29 missing mutations have been identified in the ORF uh, 1AB polyprotein. Uh, that is a protein, you know, like where, you know, this is a uh, RDRP gene, which is very important for uh, uh, the uh, for the translation of uh, 
the initial subgenomic uh, RNAs and also the conversion of positive sense to the negative sense template. And the spike protein, which has got eight missense mutations, and why I'm giving the more emphasis to the spike protein, as I said, it's a very important protein. And, uh, and among this uh, eight missense mutations, three missense mutations are identified in uh, receptor binding domain. So which is alarming, I can say, because this receptor binding domain is very, very important uh, for, uh, you know, like binding to the receptor. And also many of the vaccines and antiviral targets are, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like developed based on this S protein and also to some extent utilizing antibodies. So people now they are talking about second wave, recurrence and relax. So many people are hypothesizing, uh, hypothesized saying that, you know, like that could be a mutation in any of this protein. So one I can say is a spike polyprotein where uh, uh, this protein is also very important for their antigenicity because uh, uh, the neutralizing antibodies are proteins produced, you know, like again, this spike polyprotein. So that's why, you know, like the much importance is given to this spike polyprotein. And also other uh, like proteins like uh, uh, nucleic acid protein and matrix protein, and I mean, the membrane protein, this missing mutations have been identified, but less frequently. But what I'm saying is majority of these missing mutations are happening in the world of 1B. 1AB, the polyprotein. So, so others are, you know, like very, neg I cannot say negligible, so very less commonly I can say it is seen among the proteins. And yes, uh, none of, you know, the mutations are happening in envelope protein. So people are doing the research on that. So what makes them, you know, like very, to make them very concerned, you know, like so that, you know, like the mutations are not happening there. And again, uh, the case study number two, this study was done in University of Health Science, uh, Morocco. So what they did is, you know, uh, they took uh, 3,600, I mean, uh, 67 uh, SARS coronavirus, two complete uh, genomes from 59 countries. All the sequences are available in the databases, that is public database. So what they did is they just analyzed, you know, like, you know, like, uh, they just want to know the whole genome sequence uh, mutations. Like, for example, they just want to see in other ORFs and the previous studies, you know, like they were just limited only to the uh, ORF 1A and 1B, and along with the structural proteins uh, like S, E, and uh, N. So, whereas in this study, you know, like they just want to see the mutations, you know, like happening the whole genome sequence. And they found that uh, uh, 716 mutations were happening, you know, for this uh, 3067, of which 477. Uh, 457, sorry, you know, like mutations are not synonymous and uh, 188 were synonymous and, uh, and as you know, like remaining are endogenic mutation. The 64 percentage is alarming, as I said, you know, like the majority are non synonymous and of which, you know, like we are going to see the 39 uh, mutations are very common across the globe, I can say. And yes, all these mutations are happening in uh, like replicates polyprotein. That's why I said, you know, like. Like other proteins, uh, or of three A, or of eight, and uh, if you want to see this non-synonymous mutations, I can say majorly this uh, mutations are happening in or of one A B. That is uh, the RDRP gene. And uh, when they were doing different analysis and they were doing uh, the mutation study, and they just want to go for you know like what could be the hot spot, hot spot. Uh, regions where you know like uh, more frequent uh, mutations are happening like and they found that 10 hyper variable uh, uh, genomic hotspots in SARS coronavirus two genomes and yes if you want to see this mutation all these mutations were happening only during the middle of the outbreak and yes first mutations were uh, in the heterogenic region which is linked to the nuclear capsule protein and or and ORF8 protein but what happens is during the course of the infection, this mutation got increased and it was in the peak during the month of April. That is alarming, actually. Because, you know, like in the month of April, only the maximum, you know, like cases have been reported in Italy, I, I mean to say that in Europe and US, you know, like that, that could be the reason, the mutation could be the reason for, you know, like the, the more infected, I mean, identifying or absorbing the more infected case among the world population. And this uh, picture shows uh, uh, the various parts for, I mean, the mutations happening in the different regions of the genome. And you can able to see this uh, red color uh, dots, uh, you know, like 10 hyper variable uh, hotspots, I can see. For example, it is seen in NSP2. Uh, 
in in NSP two, especially this B four four eight D. You know, like this is the uh, sorry T twenty six fifty one, which is very common in the NSP two. And among these hotspots, I can say there's one uh, hotspot which is very commonly seen across the globe. I can say D six one four G. Even in India, you know, like they identify this mutation in our uh, you know like uh, the sequences which are identified in. Uh, I mean. Uh, In the identified in the virus strain in India. So this slide shows uh, the global distribution of uh, the hotspot mutation. So you can able to see, you know, like how this uh, coronavirus, this not, you know, like which gives a overall picture about the coronavirus, how this has become a super spreader. And uh, you can able to see the U.S. has got a maximum, you know, like uh, the mere hotspots, you know. Maximum hotspot. I can say uh, almost you know like the uh, 44% uh, of this uh, hotspot mutations are there in the uh, US, followed by China, France, and uh, New Zealand. So surprisingly, our uh, I can say 26 countries, whatever in the study they did, you know like they saw only one mutation. So yes, they are doing the research, and maybe you know like uh, uh, like India, you know like not. Many sequences are available. That could be the reason where you know, like they are not able to see more mutations in this country. We can term this as a single term mutations. Then uh, what they did is uh, 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 they just want to see, you know, like uh, uh, is there any structural similarities? Uh, uh, is there any change in the proteins? I mean, the genomic thing or any proteins? or uh, something like that among the beta coronavirus uh, including the sars coronavirus so they did the uh, pan genome analysis so in this pan genome analysis what they did is they did just took one 13 strains of which 83 were from 83 strains were sars coronavirus too, and remaining uh, strains were beta other beta coronavirus genes so in this uh, they found 94 autologous proteins that is 94 proteins are uh, You know, or uh, similar proteins. I can say with this SARS coronavirus, uh, two, one, and other bad coronavirus. Of which, ten proteins are common proteins are there with this uh, SARS coronavirus, bad coronavirus. Uh, there is one and two. I can say SARS coronavirus one and two and bad coronavirus. And uh, yes, this uh, bad coronavirus, especially this rhinoplus R T G thirteen. I can say it shares one protein, or a eight protein that is actually, you know, is shared between this uh, SARS coronavirus two uh, with bat coronavirus R A T G thirty. So why I'm saying uh, uh, I'm giving emphasis on this one of eight protein is, you know, like this is the protein where you know, like uh, where uh, you know, usually this uh, I can say this replication, you know, like for replication there are certain factors are. Right? and all those factors are there in this or of eight protein especially with sars coronavirus 2 and this uh, other proteins like uh, or of 7b and or of 10 protein yes this is very unique with this uh, sars coronavirus 2 and this this has got 11 proteins uh, among this 11 this two proteins are like an accessory proteins and remaining nine were considered to be the core protein of uh, sars corona and uh, yes So this gives an overall picture, you know, like how those uh, proteins are shared, or you know, like uh, uh, we can we can term that as an autologous, you know, like with the other, you know, like uh, the species of beta coronavirus. So this will be very useful for uh, developing a vaccine and antiviral tar targets. So coming to the Indian studies, so there are very limited Indian studies. I can say whether you know, like working on uh, the viral sequences or. Uh, The genetic diversity or the mutations which are happening in the viral sequences. So recently there was one study uh, which was done in Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. Uh, they uh, analyzed the spike protein of uh, the coronavirus two strains which has been identified in our country, and they found that uh, uh, six amino acid mutations are seen in spike protein, and uh, and yes, only one. Mutations which are seen and uh, and especially you know like not very diversified like as I said previously three uh, mutations were happening in our receptor binding domain but 
in this study what they are reported is only one mutation has uh, happened and yes this is not the case that you know like only one i can say because as i said earlier that we have we did only you know like very limited uh, sequence analysis and limited rna sequencing that could be the reason if we go for more and more sequencing we can identify more and more uh, you know like the clades or the mutations and so that you know like we can just separate you know like uh, the virus chain into different clades and yes they even they identified uh, the d614 gene mutation that is a, a major uh, hotspot you know like which is uh, seen in other countries is also been reported in our uh, country you know virus chain i guess you know like the strains uh, which is identified in our country viral strains which are identified in the country and uh, yes coming to the study as uh, the one important study is you know like uh, the machmudar et al from the national institute of biomedical genomics so they did a fire dynamics you know it's a quite interesting study i can say uh, you know uh, very limited you know like the data is available related to this phylogenetic clade and uh, one in india is uh, you know like being reported from the institute and what they did is they just analyzed the 3636 uh, sequences from 53 countries including indian sequences and they found you know 11 clades 11 clades of which you are going to see this o o clade is the ancestral clade so ancestral clade how we are turning this as ancestral clade is you know like this clade is uh, maybe you can say this is uh, the strain which they identified in o1 so o1 is o1 strain is the ancestral clade and later based on the Uh, sequence diversity and viral sample collected data viral sample collected they derived 10 more uh, phylogenetic clades b b1 b2 b4 a3 a6 a7 a1 a a2 a2 a among this o b1 a1 a and a2 a are you know like almost you know like contributes 50% of the genetic uh, you know like uh, clades among or you know like throw the word i can say 50% of the you know like strains in the world i can say so this a to a uh my you know i can say a to a you know this uh, uh, hotspot mutation point i guess that's what i was saying that uh, uh, about this d614g so that hotspot mutation uh, based on that you know like they just classified or they just you know like gave a separate clade as a to a and this is quite alarming i can say was well, this a2a is a super spreader i can say and uh, yes coming to the presentation i can uh, tell you about the slide yes uh, this shows uh, the frequencies of sars corona virus is in uh, among this five major types as this virus spreads globally so you can able to see you know like uh, the color in the you can see the intensity of color different colors i have just mentioned the, the pink color you know like blue color dark green light Light green, and even green color, orange, you know, like so all these colors of the sample which show the diversity, uh, you know, like of the virus, which is uh, actually, you know, like directly proportional to the number of sequences, uh, you know, like which which belongs to the sequence type. So you can able to see, you know, like over the period of time, like from the December, from the, you know, like January, February, and March, over the time, you know, like you can able to see, you know, like the different class of viruses. i uh, like for example o b b1 and a1 and a2 you can able to see you know like uh, uh, this a2a uh, uh, you know like initially in the month of december you know like only this o clade was there but after uh, that you know like january february and march i can see that you know like uh, we're able to find other uh, clades b b b1 a1 a and a2 and especially the month of march i can say this a2 a clade was uh, observed in uh, you know like almost all the countries i can see okay the next slide is about the frequencies uh, of uh, this major types in five countries uh, but which which is related to the prevalence of the infection so the majority of the viruses uh, you know like uh, if you're going to see you know like, i can say the ancestral type is o that is starting starting point so ancestral type even starting from china us or uh, united kingdom australia italy Like Spain, whatever you know, like you want to see, you know, like the starting point is, you know, like you know, it is uh, okay. But later, you know, like uh, this trend has been changed, you know, like to other clades. However, in China, this okay was found to be the commonest, uh, you know, like virus strain. 
and uh, yes in italy you know like a2 is found to be the commonest play and that is the reason you know like i'm saying i'm telling just a2 play is a super spreader as you are alleged that you know like maximum damage or maximum mortality was observed in uh, italy initially but now you know like in us you know like uh, that the trend is changing right you know like uh, italy is coming down and us is going down so what in us you know like uh, they have seen is you know like uh, they were seeing a lot of changes in the strain diversity because uh, the strain diversity you know like uh, started you know like uh, decreasing like for example they not able to see different uh, you know like variety of strains uh, you know like over the time and this yes, uh, over the time uh, as as i said you know like what type was found in the found you know like it is found very commonly in china but as in uh, us uh, you know like over the time you know like the whole type got disappeared and other type got introduced into the community and uh, also this a2a is now been replaced with the b1 type in us contrasting frequencies so it it, it, it is not the case that you know like uh, we have a different uh, you know like frequency of viral types are happening in the different geographical regions with the same countries so for example in us you know b1 type was very common in washington whereas uh, a to a i was very common in new york so what could be the reason that Dr. Prabhu, you are not audible. I request the audience to please kindly hold on. I kindly request the audience to kindly hold on. There is a technical issue with the side of the speaker. I kindly request the audience to please hold on. We'll be trying to connect the speaker. Please hold on. Suddenly, we lost the connectivity with the speaker. We'll be back in a few minutes. We are uh, trying to connect back and get you the remaining part of the content. Please hold on till now.
the speaker is back the speaker need to unmute uh, the speaker has to unmute the speaker is on mute mode the mic of uh, the speaker sir, okay. can you can you have to hear me yeah you are able to see yeah. you are able to see you sir okay that is great thank you uh, and i'm sorry you know like uh, due to some technical glitches uh, i know like even i didn't notice that you know i got disconnected i'm sorry for that so i don't know where it got disconnected uh, sir uh, shanmukh sundar sir uh, can you please next slide to the second slide to this, to this sir. Yeah, same thing same slide sir okay Yes. Uh, so previously we were discussing about the spatial temporal, uh, you know, like uh, the frequency of uh, the mutations, you know, like which is happening across the globe, and uh, with the different regions and different, you know, like uh, patterns with related to the infection, etc. So this slide shows, you know, like one interesting feature is about the uh, frequencies. Uh, one. Uh, thing you know, like they found is you know, like uh, there was a contrasting uh, you know, like frequencies have been identified in the same country. For example, in US, they found that B1 clade was very common in Washington, whereas you know, like A2A clade was uh, in New York. So what people are hypothesizing, hypothesizing is you know, like uh, the reason could be uh, the travel history because uh, the more and more people you know, like traveling to different countries. For example. the washington people if they are traveling to china you know that they will have the common uh, uh, genetic strain of uh, you know like uh, chinese people whereas uh, the newer people if they are traveling to euro country where uh, what are the you know like common genetic strain there in the euro uh, it is commonly seen in that country and this is not only you know like uh, there in the us even in spain even in other countries like united kingdom and canada it has been observed so all this frequencies all this patch to temporal you know like uh, uh you know like genetic traits or all those things are uh, very important especially in city like chennai you know like uh, because chennai is a hot spot even now people are wondering you know like what is the reason and uh, for uh, you know like uh, the super spreaders you know like what is the reason for the super, super spreaders why i'm saying is uh, many of the cases 80% of the cases in chennai you know like uh, the cases are asymptomatic they are not able to you know like analyze uh, like what is the reason for that Like if they could go for a sequence, uh, you know, like uh, analysis, uh, what are the strains, what are the viral strains they have, you know, like if they go for RNA sequencing, right, you know, like if they get a sequence, we could come to know, you know, like what strain is prevalent in asymptomatic and what strain is prevalent in symptomatic. Yes, we can able to correlate with the clinical conditions also, because uh, uh, many of the studies, you know, like now, you know, like uh, now they are reporting in China and uh, other. Uh, Uh, you know, like Asian countries like Hong Kong and uh, you know, like Korea, Japan, and all. So what they are saying is, a particular strain has got a particular clinical condition. So, but you know, like what they are doing is, you know, they are doing it in a 14 strain, 15 strain. You know, like that may not be very significant. If we go for a larger studies, right? If we go for a larger number of viral genomes, right? I can say that you know, like we'll we'll come to know, you know, like yes, you know, like what type of strain is. prevalent you know like in our uh, locality so that it could be very very useful to, for the public health officials you know like uh, uh, for you know like uh, identifying the super spreaders and also you know like uh, to identify the community you know like uh, uh, infection i can say and also uh, now the you know, people are start saying that you know like why you know like initially the incubation time was uh, 7 to 14 days now they are saying it's 3.5 days to 5 days so the reason could be the mutations where you know like the replication uh, you know like it's it's much faster than the previous thing you know like because of the mutations you know like with, uh, with the proteins you know like like non sexual proteins something like that i can say and there's still you know like why there's a lot of regional differences are happening like right? you know like could be uh, could be one uh, i have one hypothesis i can say is you know like a travel and uh, there are other people they are saying that you know like ethnic composition is also there because uh, even now people are saying in africa you know like there are uh, very 
you know like the cases are you know like very low when compared to the european and the, uh, us people and people are saying that climatic condition is uh, much uh, you know like uh, is much you know it's it's mostly playing a vital role but, uh, but in my opinion i can say even i thought initially that climatic condition is uh, you know like it's it's going to be a very crucial uh, you know like a thing which uh, for for the super spreaders but unfortunately you know if you're going to see in chennai you know like the climate is almost 42 degrees celsius but even now we are getting the cases so the reason could be you know like the virus is becoming stronger and stronger because of natural selection and uh, because of the environment you know like which makes them you know like uh, them more stronger more resistant to the heat and other uh, uh, factors so this the same trait was identified in even in h1n1 influenza and even the dengue virus because it, previously it was thought that h1n1 flu will be there during the cold season but in the last year and before the year and all you know, you're going to see this kind of these cases h1n1 cases were identified during the summer time uh, so that the one reason i can say is mutations and the mutation natural selection driven mutation that is the reason where you know like uh, uh, you know like which is uh, which makes the virus uh, strains diversify and also to some extent you know like the host virus interaction is also there so that's what i was telling in uh, in one slide that about the uh, about the uh, immunity and also the human genetics you know like that plays a vital role you know like uh, for you know like showing the symptoms of this infection so thank you very much for your kind attention and so this was the uh, sequences i mean uh, references i can say you know like there are or the sequences like references and the sequences study you know like which i took it from the opmen and yes which, which is very helpful for us you know like uh, preparing for this slide because uh, i just you know like going to the partner and a lot many studies are done and uh, i'm very happy that the uh, indian from you know like national institute of biomedical genomics you know like it did a huge study i am not saying that 366 you know 336 is uh, even though it's a very small but i'm saying that none of in our uh, country you know like they are that that's to do you know like such a large analysis i can say you know like for uh, sars cov 2 you know like uh, diversity so thank you very much for giving this opportunity i thank uh, dr shanu sundaram and also the wells university for giving this opportunity to share my opinion and uh, Uh, observation about this covid-19 uh, genetic uh, uh, diversity among the world population thank you thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, i am dr satish kumar and i am uh, here a uh, few doubts are there sir uh, yes sir please audience also uh, raised a few uh, queries yes. uh, before that going to the details i have a small uh, doubt whether okay. uh, this uh, genetic variations have really an impact really have an impact on finding out new vaccines for this uh, covid yes sir uh, why still you know like why we are uh, having the challenges in finding new vaccines because it, it's uh, it, it's not like that you know like in overnight you can find a vaccine because you uh, more than national you, know, like you are uh, you know like uh, you can enlighten us also 